Let's do this one more time on three. He is risen. One, two, three. Yes. You know, this is the moment. This is a moment all throughout the year that we can focus on the reality of the greatest miracle that this side of eternity will ever see. The greatest moment of our world's history that will ever happen. It is Jesus Christ conquering sin and death, overcoming the grave, and because of a relationship with him, we can experience heaven and eternity the way that God had intended every single one of us to. And I know we kind of live in a day and age where this whole idea of Easter and faith and what it is to follow Jesus, there's a disconnect a little bit. We see posts on Instagram. We see music lyrics and, and words on people's screens. And we wonder, like, what does that mean for me, though? What does this whole truth about Jesus overcoming the grave mean for me? What does it mean for me now? What does it mean for me later? And what does it mean when I die and pass on this side of earth? What does it mean? It means absolutely everything. And this isn't something that we can just kind of gloss over on a weekend and just kind of forget about. This is actually a truth, a foundational truth of who we are as believers that we can actually take every single day of our life into whatever may come our way. This excitement and joy of Jesus overcoming the grave is not just for a weekend, it's for a lifetime. And if you're here, and maybe you're here for the first time, or it's been a while since you've been, you know, to church, or, or maybe, you know, like you're here and you're just, you're just kind of interested in what this whole thing about faith is. I promise you God is going to meet you tonight because he always does. You're going to be sitting in your seats and God's word and his spirit and his presence and his truth. Maybe it's already happened while we were singing. It's going to capture us tonight in the best possible ways and he's going to give us hope. And that is the greatest thing that we can have here on earth in a dark season, in a dark time, in the dark ages that we are living at where everything that we look at is negative and, and, and depressing and discouraging. The gift of our salvation in Jesus, the hope of Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that we can have. And it's going to give us the opportunity and the power and the authority and the grace to do great things with our life. You are not here by accident. You are not just here because someone invited you or you showed up. You are here because God has called you to be here and he wants to meet you tonight. And we're going to talk about the gospel tonight. We're going to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. And my prayer, our prayer, all weekend that we've been experiencing here at Pearlside Church, but churches all around the world have been experiencing, our prayer is that there would be a positioning of our heart to love Jesus the same way that he loves us. So can we open up this evening with prayer? God, we thank you so much that this whole truth of the gospel and what you did and what we celebrate and, and what we look on, look towards during Easter is not just for a moment. This is a life transforming truth of the gospel. And we lift up every brother and sister that's here. God, we know that it's been a rough year and a rough season and we are living in rough times. But God, no matter how dark things are, God, we know that your light pierces the darkness because you are pure and you are holy and you are good. So as we dive into your word, I pray that your spirit would meet us where we are at and that you would take us to glory to glory and we would leave here encouraged, excited, and joyful because Easter is about celebration and following you is a lifestyle of celebration. That's what we want to capture this evening. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. amen. The gospel is the good news of what Jesus did. We talked about it a little bit already, but in order to set up how good the good news is, we actually have to talk a little bit about the bad news. Number one in your notes goes like this. We will face moments of darkness because of the consequences of sin. And sin, biblically, is just anything that God hasn't called us to do, called us to live, calls us to experience when we aren't living aligned with his word, it's sin. And throughout the world's history, throughout Bible history, throughout many of our own lives, the things that we've experienced, the things that we've gone through personally, and the things that we are witnessing locally, nationally, and globally, we are seeing the effects of what sin does to the good things that God has created this world to be for. For love, for hope, for joy, for peace. We don't see enough of that. Because this world is broken because of sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they ate the fruit and, and they, they sinned, sin entered the world. And again, we are living in the consequences of that. My life, many of our lives have been affected because of sin. And sometimes we can lose hope in our world. And if 
we kind of feel like in this time that you are like on your last thread of hope, it's understandable because this has been a crazy season, crazy time in history. But again, the bad news doesn't end with the bad news. It ends with amazingly good news of Jesus. And I hope, again, all of us can leave here, not with a thread of hope, but with a perspective of hope and a lens of hope every single day of our lives. That is the hope of Jesus. And when God saw all of the things that were happening in this world, that's why he sent his son Jesus, to live the perfect life that we should have lived, to die the death that we deserved because of sin, because sin separates us from God. It would send us to hell without a relationship with God. But he would send his son Jesus to pay that price, to be the living sacrifice, to bear the weight of the whole world's sin so that darkness could not last forever. Amen? And I know that's, it's, it's a very sobering thing to start with the bad news, but we have to. And you know, one of the things that I want to encourage all of us to do, if you haven't yet already, I want to encourage us to read the Gospels and read through what Jesus did for us. So easy, we can just kind of come into a place like this and, and read a post, repost a post, and just kind of like talk about Jesus and Easter just as if it's like anything else that we post on social media or anything else that we do throughout the week. But when you live with this perspective of what Jesus had to die for, endure for, for us, it makes you love Jesus so, so, so much. He was betrayed by the very people that witnessed him perform the miracle signs and wonders and extend love and grace to. These very people were the very ones that said, send him to the cross to die. They chose to sacrifice or to crucify Jesus. They picked Jesus over an actual criminal. They brutalized and they beat him. They whipped him. They harassed him. They mocked him. So much so that they would twist a crown of thorns above his head. The king of the Jews. And then he had to carry a cross. And then he brought the cross from the temple courts all the way to Calvary. He was nailed to the cross and he was hung on the cross. And there was this moment of darkness. And I think for many of us, we've experienced moments of darkness in our life, especially in this season. But you know, all of this darkness that we have experienced, that doesn't have to be what defines our life. What defines our life is what Jesus did with that darkness. He overcame it, and his light broke through. We're going to open up um, God's word with a passage from Matthew 27, 45 to 50. And it's going to give us a sobering perspective of what Jesus did. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. You know, a lot of this is what we reflect on on Good Friday. And it's kind of weird that we would say Good Friday is a good day when that was the day that Jesus died on the cross. But what's a very interesting perspective when you read these passages is Jesus speaking to his father, God. And he's saying, God, my God, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? And that text, there was a moment where God actually turned away from his son Jesus because of all of the darkness and sin that Jesus was carrying on the cross. God hates sin. He doesn't hate the sinner, but he hates sin. And when he saw the weight of sin that was on his son, he couldn't look anymore. And you know why that moment is so pivotal and paramount for our walk and our life with God is because God himself would never turn his face from us ever again. Because Jesus took that moment on the cross, God can look at us because of Jesus conquering sin and death and no longer see the darkness of sin that entangles us, but the grace of his son Jesus, which has saved us. It is a powerful, powerful moment to know that this God who created the world and the universe looks at us and he will never turn away. And I know time and time again we think, can God love me? Can he accept me? Can he forgive me? And we battle with like this loneliness and fear and guilt and condemnation and judgment to the point where we feel like we're so alone. 
are never alone with God. He is always with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. He is among us. And why? Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. This is what Easter is all about. Singing is fun. We're going to have fun after. You have photo booths. I think we have some cookies for you. But none of those things can fulfill what only Christ can fulfill in our hearts when we reflect and ponder on what Easter means, not just because of a weekend, but in our life and forevermore. The reality, though, is because of sin, we live in a broken world, and every single day we are going to have a choice to look at the hardships and trials that we're facing in the eye and say, I choose Jesus. I choose life. I choose hope. I choose victory. I choose triumph over these very things. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're experiencing, but God does, and he's heard your cries, and he's heard your prayers, but you have a choice to either succumb to the darkness or choose the life of Christ. And guess what? When you choose life, life will come abundantly in an instant and a moment. Why? Because Jesus Christ is with you. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, my God is with me. Turn to your other neighbor, say it even louder, my God is with me. Turn to your other neighbor that you said it initially and say it even louder, my God is with me. Doesn't that feel good to say stuff like that, that my God is with me? Not to just say it, but also hear it from other people. You know why Easter brings the Christians all around together? It's so that we know that we're not alone. That we're in this together. And every time you feel like you can't keep on going anymore, you can turn to a brother or sister in Christ sitting next to you and they will tell you that your God, my God, our God is with us. You are not alone. We're going to watch a video, a powerful testimony of a family who had a choice to succumb to darkness or choose life and hope and Jesus and joy and peace. And this is going to be the segue from the bad news to the good news of the gospel for us tonight. This family is the Yi family. Many of you guys know DJ. He's one of our, he was one of our worship leaders here. His father, uh, Uncle Dennis, contracted COVID-19 while him and his wife were traveling. Like, they rented an RV and they drove from New York. And they were just doing this cross-country traveling and retirement. But also they wanted to share the gospel in every state that they went to. And unfortunately, while they were uh, in Vegas, he contracted COVID-19. This has been a horrible, horrible pandemic. So dark. So many lives have been lost. And we remember those lives, every single person that has been affected by this pandemic and just everything that's gone on in this season. But this family had a choice. They've been believers for a very, very long time. Uncle, auntie, DJ, his sister, Ashley. We're going to hear a story about how they chose, in the midst of darkness, the piercing light of Jesus and how that turned things around. Not just in the miracle, but in the mindset. And if we can have a mindset of miraculous faith in our day-to-day -day lives when things come our way, there is nothing that we can overcome here on earth. And even if things don't necessarily get better here on earth, there's the promise of eternity that's waiting for us. It gives us hope that everything's going to be okay. Take a look at this video and be encouraged by what God is doing. It's taught me patience, but it's going to take time and, and a lot of prayer. I can't, I can't just depend upon myself. I, can, I have to depend upon God. Well, in October 2019, uh, we both retired uh, from our jobs in Hawaii. And um, we had planned um, for a while to uh, start traveling the United States in a motorhome. We've been traveling for the last uh, year and a half. Ended up in Las Vegas for about two and a half months. And um, uh, that's when I got COVID and eventually a stroke also. My dad had been in the hospital for, I want to say about a month, a month and a half at that point. 
and it was very hard to continue to pray and to believe these promises that God has for healing when every report you get, you're getting from the doctors is not good. I called my mom and just, you know, just crying and um, I put my phone down and um, I remember just trying to make sense of everything that was going on. We get a call from the doctor as we're driving home from church one day. You know, your dad, he's not really having any meaningful neurological responses. Basically, she was telling us that he was a vegetable. That's when we decided to call DJ, have him and his girlfriend Leia fly up. We're going to talk to our family and make a decision together so we could take dad off of the ventilator and basically say our last goodbyes. We had notified our family what was going on. My cousins came in here like soldiers wanting to do battle and says, it's not over. Let's get together and pray. We weren't the only ones fighting, you know, in prayer. There was a whole, you know, spiritual army that were fighting alongside us in prayer. Our pastors back home, Pastor Coach, we called the Pastor Roland here in Las Vegas. In my prayer time, um, I saw, I just saw God scooping him up the bed like this and breathe, God, breathe on him. The next day when I called for an update, the nurse was very excited to give me a report. Hi, I'm so excited he's breathing 60%. You know, he's not out of the woods yet, but you don't go from 100% to 60%. Yeah, when I woke up, things, not everything was working. I realized the importance of relationship, not only the people around me, but also with God. You know, he was working on patients. He was working on me seeing the bigger picture, not just focused on the type of things that I wanted to see happen, but to see the things that God wanted to happen. Our faith isn't based off of getting our prayers answered. It's based on how good God is and how, how much He loves us that He would send His Son. For Him, I know it's humbling for Him to have to actually rely on other people. You know, show other people our weakness, show God our weakness, show the people of God our weakness. A big thank you. I'm thankful that they're here for me. I'm thankful that they're here. They, they, they've always been here for me. And um, to come all the way from Hawaii to Las Vegas just to help take care of me, I'm thankful for that. God is good through it all. He's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. And that, you know, that was the testimony that I wanted to share, that we praise Him through it all. It doesn't matter what's going on. We give God some praise. It's a very interesting thing that we don't like to be in darkness, right? This whole idea of darkness, this whole idea of hardship and trial, like it creates like such an emptiness and a void in our lives. We don't want to be there anymore. And we forget that even Jesus Christ, for three days, he was in the grave. For three days that he was in a tomb, there was darkness. But in the midst of darkness, we need to remember, we must remember that God is moving and he is doing things behind the scenes that we may not be able to see or articulate, but we know what God's word says. We know what he speaks to us. And this family, they chose to declare the prayers that God called them to pray for their father to come, to come back to life. There was actually a moment where they were ready to pull off the cord. That's what they were, they legally had to do that because of what was written in Uncle Dennis's, Dennis's will. And the doctors for about, I think, three months were saying that there's no hope, there's no hope. But when the power of prayer came in and spoke to Auntie Beth, and everyone was praying alongside of them, they were like, no, let's keep on going, let's keep on believing. And it happened when a doctor said, why don't we try this tracheotomy? Why don't we try this? Let's see what happens. And then God came in and he intervened, and the rest is history. He's recovering. He was at Easter service. We even have this photo of him eating some pizza. If you need some humor tonight, pizza makes everything better, right? Diet Coke, I would do a regular Coke if it was me, but it's okay. 
in the midst of darkness, what we do in those moments matter. We can either say, God, I'm just going to sit here and give up and raise a white flag. Or we can remember that Jesus didn't stay in the darkness or stay in the grave, but the stone was rolled away. The veil was torn. He exited and came out. And because of that, the greatest miracle, the miracle of our salvation is ours. We can receive that gift of salvation. We can receive that gift of hope every single day. It doesn't come easy, but it's absolutely worth it because what God does in the darkness is he develops faith in him because we have to trust God in the darkness. What darkness is in your life are you battling? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it circumstantial? Is it hardship? Is it trial? Is it health? Is it relationship? What are the things that sin is saying, give up on, stay in the tomb? It's dark and give up. But God wants to say on this Easter Sunday, arise and wake up, have hope, come out, experience my light, experience my life, and let's go and go and go and live out the greatest days that you will ever live here on earth with God each step of the way because of what Jesus did on the cross. We can have that, which means when you go to school and when you go home to your parents and when you go out in the community, when this pandemic is done because it will be done in Jesus' name and we go back to what normalcy looks like, we can bring the hope and joy of the world in Jesus Christ to the world. Come out of the tomb. You don't belong there. And yeah, maybe the hardships and trials won't go away on this side of eternity. But guess what? Because of eternity in heaven, it will, where everything will be perfect, just as God has intended it to. Keep on going every day. Get up knowing God is good. He's good even in the hardships. He's good even in the trials. And how do we know that? Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus Christ endured for us was good. It was for our good. Amen. Number two. We have overcome the darkness of sin by the everlasting light of Jesus Christ. Again, remember Jesus came out of the tomb, Matthew 28, 5, 10 to 16, uh, 16 and 17 as well. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen. And he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me now. The 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And then, and when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. My prayer is that none of us would be the ones that doubt that Jesus overcame the grave. That that would be the truth that we hold on to every single day of our life. And what marks us when we know that Jesus overcame the grave? It's joy. It is absolute stoked out joy. I can't see you smiling, but I believe you are smiling under your mask because of joy. Because Jesus is joy. He is hope. He is life. He revealed to him, or he revealed himself to his disciples after the darkness. You know how beautiful it'll be when we endure by the grace of God and the faith that we have in Jesus Christ through our darkness and we can see Jesus face to face and we can be like, oh my God. You have been in control. You have been doing great works. You have been with my best interests in mind this whole time. Thank you, God. I am so happy I met you when I came out of this tomb. I'm telling you, for some of us here, it's time to come out. Come out of that darkness and enter into God's light because every time we choose life through Jesus Christ, there's joy because life was a creation from God. Sin was a consequence of death, but life is a joy. It is a product of God's love. It is proof of God's love. When life happens, joy happens. Amen? We celebrate things that talk about life, and I just want to share one celebratory thing that I just can't wait to share with you. Chantel and I are 13 weeks pregnant. We are having a baby. 
And I don't care how bad this past year and a half has been. Moments like this remind me that God is faithful and he is good. And if we just look a little bit harder, dig a little bit deeper, pray a little bit more with intention and fervency, even in the midst of the darkness that the world shows, we can see the goodness of God. And on October 14th, we are going to see the goodness of God. There is nothing better than life. Amen? Can we give God some praise for that? Can we put that second photo up? I like the second photo too. Oh, I know. This is the same park that we got uh, engaged at, I proposed. It's a very meaningful park to us. It's really cute. I know. Oh, right? But this is what happens when you experience life. And you know what? Like, if we were really honest with ourselves, if we looked at this past year, and we could see the darkness, but we could choose to see what God was doing in the midst of darkness. There are so many things that God has revealed his life and his light to us. The fact that we are breathing, the fact that we're alive, the fact that we can gather and worship and pray together, the fact that we got past a year of this pandemic is proof of God's faithfulness over your life. It is the absolute proof. So if hardships and trial come after this pandemic and this, everything that's occurred over this past year and a half, and whatever may come, if you don't have like the, the courage to look at it and be like, man, like God got me. My reminder to all of us is look at this past year. He absolutely got you. Look at God's word and his spirit and his truth. He absolutely has got us. Look for the moments in your life where you can see and experience God's life because it's his life and his light that pierces through the darkness. We're gonna come out of this season you are going to come out of this personal hardship and trial that you're enduring. Why? Because Jesus rose again and we will rise with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to take a look at the crucifixion. I mean, we can read God's word. We can talk about God's word. But I just think it's something powerful when we can visualize God's word. And man, this is just like the best that we could do as human beings. This is, doesn't even come close to real life in the moment that the disciples and people got to witness. But man, like every time I watch things about Jesus' crucifixion, like it just, it, it just pulls me back a couple steps. And I look at my relationship with God and everything that I have with so much more gratefulness and thanksgiving. And again, my prayer for all of us tonight is that would be the same heart that we would be grateful and thankful coming out of this Easter weekend of everything that Jesus did, that we would be encouraged that Jesus overcame the grave and we will overcome the grave. The story of Jesus is more epic than any Marvel cinematic movie you could ever watch. It is more beautiful and loving than anything the notebook could put on your heart. And it is even more long-lasting and everlasting than any Star Wars movie that we'll end up watching before we pass here on earth. There is no movie more epic, no story more amazing, no love story more impactful than the story of Jesus Christ. You know, if he didn't overcome the grave, then this whole Christianity thing would mean absolutely nothing because he wasn't the son of God. And you know, the disciples for three days, when they had witnessed Jesus die, that darkness overwhelmed them for a little bit. They were anxious, they were worried, they were afraid. And they wanted to kind of raise that white flag and give up on this faith that they were professing and this teacher, this loving teacher and savior that they were following, this friend that they were following. They wanted to give up. But just when the world wanted to go dark and people wanted to go dark, God knew, Jesus knew that he needed to come out of the grave so that he could bring hope to the world, that he would fulfill the prophecies from the Old Testament in that very moment. He proved that he was the son of God. He proved it. And no matter what anyone wants to say about your faith and Christianity and this and that, no one can take anything away from the life transformation that God has done in your heart. And that is the most precious, most amazing gift that we can have. It is a gift we can take every single day. It is the good news that we can take to this world. Number three, as we come to a close tonight, 
we receive eternal light and eternal life through Jesus Christ. John 1, 9, 12. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And lastly, in John 8 to 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. Easter, so much bigger than an Instagram post. So much bigger than even just coming to a service, although we're so glad that you're here. Easter is about this free gift of salvation that God gave us through Jesus Christ. It was free for us, but it cost him everything. And he did it. Amen.